Hi there. I've decided to add a large P5 matrix to my show this year. I've completed the build. I thought I'd show you how I accomplished that and kind of walk you through the build process. So let's get going. So I started making the enclosure for my large P5 panel. What I've done is I've cut a groove the width of a saw blade and for I'm using a, a kerf thickness of an eighth of an inch on mine and that is a three eighths of an inch in from the edge of the piece of wood I'm using one by uh, one by six pine boards and I got a three eighths of an inch I've come in and then an eighth inch six so I'm coming in total half an inch this groove this slot right here is for my plexiglass front to protect the panels since I bought indoor panels and I'm going to use Bascoyo's product. It's a real thin uh, plastic, I believe it's polycarbonate. I'd have to look that up to uh, go in front of the panels. I'll construct these into a box. I set up my table saw here with my blade up three eighths of an inch, halfway through the three quarter inch thick uh, pine boards, and just set it over the. Uh, three eighths of an inch like I said earlier and then just ran it through my saw and there's the last piece. That way all of the grooves line up perfectly. The next step will be to cut these to size and then connect them up together. Here's the frame I constructed which will be what the P5 panels mount to. Using, right now I'm using the Wired Watts uh, strips which you can get from their website directly and also Boscoyo makes a very similar product. All right, so I built a one, one by one, or it's actually three quarters of an inch thick because it has a one by six piece of board that I ripped. Um, I just did square joints on the end, glued them together, and then I drilled with brad nails on it with glue, and then to reinforce it, I, I countersunk a hole using a screw, and those are on all four corners. Here's another one just like that, and so that'll be plenty strong, especially when it gets reinforced on to the actual enclosure, which will be nailed and glued in place. So I've started uh, assembling the outside of my frame for the panels. Um, you'll see the, the one by frame that I built. What I did is I've screwed it and I've glued it all in place. I put half inch plywood to hold it up. All right, and so what I've also done on the long pieces um, I made them a little bit longer, as you'll see here when I put it there, got a little bit of an overlap. And this will get uh, glued into place and screwed onto the frame here perfectly. And you see I've cut it just to the right size so it comes right to the edge there. I may have to do a little sanding, I'll do that in the opposite end. Uh, and with that, everything will come together and then at the very end, when I get everything assembled, um, and glued together, what I'll do is I'll sand off the excess. Well, here it's large enough, I'll probably cut and sand off the excess so it's a nice, smooth finish. I made the overlap basically on the top for a reason, for the weather. Uh, so if, if it rains on them, I want the rain to go down the side and not penetrate to a, through a gap on the corner there. Well, you can see that I painted my, uh, my box. I've got the uh, all the edges in place that the panels will be mounting on. I've set up a corner bracket here. This is a steel uh, shelving bracket you get from Home Depot. Um, two of the holes there I had to drill out to make them 5 sixteenths, give me a bit more uh, strength because it was going to be suspended by its top the way I'm going to set it up in my house so the whole top's going to support it. So I'll make sure I have those steel brackets in the middle to support that. And you can see the lips here is where the, uh, the panels will be secured to. The Boscoyo plastic sheeting that, uh, that I got for the, the front cover of the P5 panels was really quite flexible and really hard to get it in the grooves I had cut into the wood. What I ended up having to do is, you'll see I put a bunch of uh, slats across it so it would sit flat. It kept like drooping and it kept popping out. And so once I did that, I was able to finally get it into place.
You'll see here on the edge of the uh, plastic, I've just taken a staple gun and I've stapled it right to my wooden shelf, which the panels will be sitting on and as well as obviously the plastic sheeting sits on front to waterproof it. I'll be running a uh, bead of caulking, clear caulking all around the edges of this to seal it up. I've got the panels all wired up. Uh, got the five volt power supplies, color light card in. Uh, Raspberry Pi in place. I need to put the new FPP 5.0 on that car, uh, Raspberry Pi. And I still need to flash the color light card with this configuration. Uh, one more time, we have six panels across. Seven down, which gives me a six by three and a half feet. I have the distribution boards which come off of each of the five volt power supplies and there I branch them out to all of the the panels as well as I wired it directly to the color light card and the Raspberry Pi. I've got an eye bolt here which I use to which I'm going to use to hang it. I got two of them and then down on the side here, I have another one, and that's gonna I'm gonna hang it off of my front porch, and that'll keep it from swinging so that it'll now below, and this will get pulled off. I'll probably use a pulley system of some sort. Um, I have these distribution boards are from J boards, and I have another one here from Wired Watts. So it really doesn't make any difference where you get those from. They all work. Um, I also have from Wired Watts the panel mount panel connectors, and all of these uh, panels came from Wally's Lights. So you can see I've sourced uh, all my materials from various different locations. So here's the completed matrix from the front. Uh, I'll just kind of walk through it real quickly. Again, made from pine boards on the outer shell. I have large eye bolts for lifting it. The Boscoyos uh, plastic sheeting in front for to protect the indoor panels. Ran a bead of caulk all around the inner edge, or the edge of it to keep the water out. I even put some, uh, some caulking right where all the staples were to ensure that it's waterproof. I've added to it, which is not part of the build video, I added a axle and wheel system. If there's some interest in that, I can do a video on how I, how I built those and I got a handle for pulling it along. So here's the back of my completed uh, P5 panel. Uh, you will see I have three vents on top, right above where the three power supplies are. Uh, unique to my build is I've added um, four doors. So I have access to the Raspberry Pi and a color light card on the smaller door there. And the larger ones have access to the power supply and the fuse, fuse boards. Uh, this way I'll be able to get access to the fuses, replace them if any of them blow, and without taking the whole back off of the unit. So now I've opened up the, one of the doors on, my, on the back of my P5 panel. Thought I'd show you how I sealed it. I just took some simple weather stripping, just stick tape on the back, outline the door, and then I just close it over the top. I have some cabinet hinges on there, and I just seal it up with screws. Just screw it in place. I'm not going to open it very often, uh, but it makes it easy to get to when needed. Nothing too fancy. As you can see, I have a plexiglass uh, on the door there as well, which I've sealed up with caulking. On the bottom, there's an Ethernet pass-through connector, as well as I have the uh, power cord coming in. And that, sh that concludes this video. I hope this has helped somebody out there. You guys all have a wonderful day.